So far in Flutter, we've been mainly doing, creating lots of widgets all in kind of our main uh, class uh, area. So this t week we're going to start looking at uh, breaking widgets up as methods inside uh, the class and also breaking them up in separate classes so they can be stored in separate files. So the first thing we're going to look at, and probably the easiest thing to do, is just take a widget, a, a whole hierarchy of widgets, and break it off into a method in the same class. Uh, so then the general f method of this, or you know, kind of template of this, is just like we declare, declare any method. We just declare a method's name with parameters if we need any, but often we, we may not have any. And then brackets uh, here. Uh, the return type uh, of the method we have will be the widget type, and then we want to say return widget. Now, one thing that's a little strange uh, here is that often with like Java methods, you'd have uh, a Java method, and you'd have a bunch of code, and then the return at the end. Uh, here, we're recurring a widget, and then so often we have most of our code for creating the widget after you know in this return statement. So often the first statement will be return widget, and then we'll define the whole widget underneath that uh, here. Now it's possible to do this automatically with some shortcuts. We'll look at some code here and we'll say refactor and then we'll say extract a widget. So let's jump, I'm going to jump into this, uh, the tip calculation example we did earlier in the class uh, here. Uh, let's see, so I'm going to open this up, uh, find the main Dart file here. I need to run pubget because I brought this down from GitHub and there's lots of errors. It just doesn't have everything here. Okay, so now we've got everything here. And again, remember this whole part. We have our main, we have our stateless widget. Uh, then that creates a stateful widget. And inside that we have a state uh, uh, class uh, where we have our actual widget. So this is our build where we're building our, our, our main widget uh, here. Um, now one thing that's sometimes useful with these long widgets is to look at the Flutter outline here. Um, and again, it may take a, a sec to build that, uh, but that will uh, show uh, this outline of this uh, widget here, uh, widget tree for us. So again, this shows the whole widget, the main app, my app, the, my homepage. Uh, and the state. So again, we're, we can actually then kind of close these off. We're not going to be working with those and then we'll just be working here. Shows our variables we have, our main build widget, the scaffold, the app bar, the center widget, which is the main body of this widget uh, here, the columns. And again, you can view through. So sometimes it's easier to see this outline rather than going through all the code uh, here. So what were we going to do here? I think uh, we're going to pull out this. Uh, there's a uh, switch for good service or not for this. So we're going to look at that uh, here. So um, there's a switch here for good service. Uh, it, there's a row where we say the text good service and then we have a switch and then we have some code inside that good service. Uh, here now, this uses a number of variables inside our code, so it's a good candidate for a um, method rather than a separate class because it's tied pretty. It, it has a lot of ties to uh, these variables in this uh, up here. So I'm just going to go. I'm going to go to this row here. Actually, to start with that row, I think uh, that whole section here down to here, and I'm just going to say right click uh, refactor. And again, there's extract a method or extract to a Flutter widget. This is a, a, new, a whole new class. So we'll be doing that later. But for now, we're just going to extract this to a method. And we're going to give it some name. So again, this is a, a good service switch or something like that. Give it some name. Um, and we're going to refactor it. And so that'll replace all that code with a simple call to a method and then down below it moved all that code down here for us. So here's our good service, our, the row is down here, uh, the children of the switch, all the all the values are here. And again, the, the main part of this is just one, there's just a return and then we're returning a widget which is a row 
uh, here. And then again, so the return type is a row and a good service is the name, no parameters here. Now, one thing's really nice about these uh, using uh, methods is that again, you can access uh, all these uh, uh, values, uh, local variables, because again, here we've got our build widget here, it's, you know, let me minimize this and this. So these two widgets are both in this class. Uh, here and so they can access any of these variables so we can set variables and read variables and same with this controller here to read the text box we have access to all of that uh, stuff inside our methods so this is a good way to break it up when um, you are trying to access uh, we have lots of ties to local variables defined in the state class for this um, so the next thing we're going to do is look at widgets as classes, break these into separate classes. And so this is good, um, when, but this only works when we have loosely coupled widgets. So again, widgets that are not tied closely to other widgets or other values. So it's kind of a whole separate uh, kind of widget for our, you know, stuff. And we're not, it's hard, we can pass variables back and forth, but again, it's a little more complicated to do. So we can, we want to minimize that for that. So here's how we do. We'll create a stateless widget class, a uh, class name, uh, we'll say class and then the class name, and then it always will extend the stateless widget. We'll have a bracket here uh, that'll go down, it'll mark the, the class going down to here. Uh, we declare a constructor, so that constructor has the same the name, same name as this. We pass in a uh, one variable, the key, uh, and that's passed to the um, stateless widget uh, parent here. And again, if we want to pass in more uh, values, parameters to this from the other from the parent widget, we can uh, add parameters to here. So that's how we do that. Uh, and then we have a build method that actually returns, and this is where we build our widget. So this is kind of our template here for this. So there's a couple ways of doing it. We can do refract, refract, refactor uh, extract widget, uh, flutter widget. So let's look at that uh, here. Um, so I'm just going to do, uh, a, again, a part of this, uh, the title widget here. So inside our uh, widget, uh, we have this title, and maybe we want this title to be more complicated and stuff. This just displays it. It's more like a heading, I guess, than the title of the widget. Uh, so I'm going to call this a heading uh, here, and I, I'm, I'm going to break it again. It's not a great example, but again, one thing that's nice is it doesn't. It stands by itself pretty well uh, here. So I'm going to click. I'm going to go inside here and right click and do uh, refactor extract to Flutter widget here. Now, uh, just so you note that we could also be just doing it here. We could go over here and do uh, extract widget and that does the same thing. So you can do that right in the outline also. So I'm going to do here, uh, refactor extract to widget, give it some name and this will be, um, I'm just going to call this my, uh, since it's going to be a, a separate class, I'm going to start with a capital letter heading uh, widget, uh, call that and refactor that. So again, it, it's similar before, it's going to pull this out, but it's going to pull this out to its own class here. So again, down here, this was inside the previous class here, and this is the end of that. Here's a whole new class for this widget, heading widget, uh, it's a stateless widget, and we have it all set up here. So that's, uh, and again, it then moved our code down into the build method, the return method of this. Now one thing that's nice about this is then we can move this to its own uh, file. So I can go up here in lib, I can say new dart file and create a new dart file. Now here are the file names I think have to be all lowercase in dart and no, and just underscore. So I'm just going to call this heading widget. And unlike like Java, the file name doesn't have to match the class name. Uh, I'm going to add that to GitHub, um, and I'm going to bring, I'm going to cut this all out of here and put this in here. Now there's going to be errors initially because I, I need to do my import. So I'm going to go up here and just grab my Flutter material uh, import package and move that over here also. So 
uh, do my inputs, and then we'll have the widget here. So now this is all set, no errors in this, so it's a standalone widget. Again, we're not accessing any of the uh, properties or, or any of the variables in the other widget class uh, here. And then, um, so here's our um, uh, class uh, here, but we shall, we will have an error. Oops, I put in a breakpoint accidentally here, where it, it's trying to call the heading widget and it's not finding it. And the reason is it's not imported. So I can just do the import. Or uh, actually, usually when I do this, I just add the import. So I'm just doing import in the name of that file there. So those are my two imports. So now once I have that import here, I can access that. Of course, you know, we don't have to add, do the import if it's just a method. So this good service switch is here. That's fine. But this um, text field, this heading widget, we, we do. So then often we'll break our um, app into, our main app, into just uh, separate uh, methods and we'll have much less stuff here. So for example, uh, in the scaffold, there are three parts. There's the app bar here let's just minimize this and there's the the body and often there's a uh, switch uh, a button a flow and action button or something like that and we can do that so again I can grab this uh, app bar move that and I again I want this I'm going to move into its own uh, method down below uh, and this is the um, tip app bar down here and again this whole body uh, one I'm going to move that down into that and say um, refactor move uh, extract a method and this will be my tip uh, body here so now my scaffolding is here and then I have the tip body down here uh, I have the tip app bar and then within the tip body, I have these. And then again, I could maybe move this elevated button. That would be a good one. Okay. And I, here I see, again, a lot of in, internal. I have access to the, the controller and a number of variables. So maybe I don't want to make it its own method. Maybe I want to just make this uh, its uh, a, a, a method here. So this would be the um, calculate tip button here. So again, then then you can break your code up into parts uh, here. And again, if if they're separate and they're large, we can break them up in their own class here. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can just break them up in methods. Um, now let's talk a little bit more. Go back to this where we broke this up to its own class, um, and talk about how we can create our own class here. Let's say you wanted to build this from scratch and you didn't want to extract it. Um, how would you do this? Well, how would you create this framework uh, to get your code? So this is all the code we want. How would you create that framework? Well, if you create a new file or uh, if you're outside here uh, and you just want to create a new class, there's some short codes. I can type in STL for state and I can choose between stateless and stateful and I can tra create change this to a stateless class. And it creates basically the, the whole template, and it wants me to type in the name uh, here, my widget class. And it'll put that in the constructor also and set that up. Uh, and so this is basically the same framework here. And again, uh, by, by default, it's returning a, an empty container. And this is where we put our code here. Uh, for this. So again, we can use this uh, short code, just STL, and choose ch state list to create a state list widget. You can also create a stateful widget in the same way for this. Um, so that's what this uh, does. Now let's talk about passing parameters to this widget. Let's say we wanted to pass the title to the widget. So in the main uh, activity, when we're doing the title or the heading here, we want to maybe pass the heading to this. Uh, Tom's tip calculator. I want to pass that there. Um, and so in order to do that, now that is this is the constructor for this class. And so I'd have to go in here. Uh, this is my class. And this const heading widget, this is the constructor. And then it just has one parameter here for the key um, here. And it's optional. Um, and so um, there's two types of parameters here. We can specify them by name or by location. So we can kind of talk about that. But uh, I want to add a uh, position here. So I could just go in here and say, oh, I'm going to add a string parameter. 
Uh, and I'm going to call this the title um, for this. Uh, and I, I would want to declare that down below here. Uh, and again, with constructors in Dart, what you do is you declare a value here. Um, and then you reference it up here. So rather than declaring it here, I would just say, um, uh, well, I would say this dot title, because then I have to reference it directly down below here for this. Um, oops, and it doesn't say it. I can't have this starting with an underscore, I guess, uh, there. Um, now, again, um, if you have some... Um, if you don't specify the names of this, uh, you might, and you have some optional require ones, you might have to require certain parameters here. Oops, and I've got a comma here. That's my problem. Uh, for this, let's see if I still have to do that required. Yeah, I think this is still going to have to be required. And it, there's also a problem with non-null often um, uh, here, where I might have to make this final for this to work. So this is saying, give me an error here, I think. Um, can't define null, non-null fields, and it, so the fix for that is that this should be a final variable. I'm going to initialize it here and not reset it, and that way it'll prevent this from ever going null, being a null variable. So once I get that set up, then this should work. I should be able to pass that. Um, but now it's saying the title parameter is here, and so again, this is kind of a named uh, parameter here, so I've had to say title colon, and then the name of that. Uh, so it has to match this uh, variable here. Uh, so I say head widget and I'm passing in the title parameter and this is the, the value for that. Now um, rather than setting that all up manually, I mean there there's probably, I can just do the shortcuts. Let's get rid of this and this for now. Go back to our, so this is what we were before. Uh, we had this error here, and let's just look at the quick fix, is also add the required positional parameter. So this will add, it'll ask for a name, it'll a string s uh, here, and I want the, I wanted a string, and I want it uh, to be called title for that, oops, um, here. Um, and it's, it's passing that in. Now, it doesn't give us a variable we can access uh, in any way, so we do want, uh, if we're going to use it down here, uh, if we want to use the title down here, uh, we've got to save this somewhat in some sort of local variable. So this is where we do our string title. So again, the the shortcut helps a little bit uh, there, but doesn't help entirely. So, and I want to say this dot title for this. So, and it looks like we're going to need to uh, require this as a final. Okay, so again, similar sort of stuff. So you can sometimes do this shortcut uh, here or not. Now, this time it did this positional uh, rather than um, as optional. And so again, if if this is outside this bracket here, this is a required positional one, you always have to specify that. If you're declaring parameters inside the curly bracket, there are generally, um, uh, can be required or not, and are more flexible, and they have uh, they have to have names tied to them. So notice, it, since I just declared the parameter outside the curly brackets here, uh, I didn't have to specify title here. So again, there's some different ways. I'm not going to go into too much on Dart how we pass in parameters, but just know that there are two main ways of passing parameters: by position, uh, which we define it here, or when we're inside here by a key, uh, you know, a name, a key value kind of pair. We specify the name and then the value for that. So that's how we can pass information to uh, our classes uh, for this. Um, last thing we want to look at is um, making this a stateful widget. Uh, so if we're updating the screen in some ways uh, for this, uh, this is a stateless widget. We can't uh, update the screen here. So if we did, we would want to change this. So there's a couple ways of doing this. One is I can just right click on that. I can show oh, refactor. Um, no, I guess it's in show context. I can say convert to a stateful widget. So again, right now this is one class with a build method. 
And when we go to a state full widget, it'll have two classes, the, the, the widget class and the state class. So if I right click on there and go show contacts, convert to a stateful widget, it's broken this now up into two classes. So the first class is my stateful widget uh, here with my parameters here. Um, and uh, it calls the create state to create my state. And then the second class is the actual state class uh, where we have our build method and we have our actual widgets uh, here. Uh, so and now we can we can do update state and things like that. Now one thing's different here is now our parameter we passed in is up here in this widget class, and we are down here. And so here we can't just say like this dot title, but we can access the parent widget class from within the state. We just have to say widget dot title. Uh, so widget by adding that will will go up and grab any information from the the widget class that this state is part of. So we can just we can pass in uh, parameters the same way here and do it that way. Now again, if you're doing a shortcut key for that, this is a lot of code. So if you type stlf, you know that we state for uh, st full, and if you do that short code, it creates again this. And I can type in my class name here, whatever your class is called, uh, and it it actually does it in a number. You can see it's changing this. Uh, in four places uh, this class in the constructor in this variable or this class down here which is the state corresponding to that it changes all those so here it, it creates again our stateful widget class um, with our constructor and then we call get state or create state and then we have our state class down here and then a build method and this is where you'd actually put the code so again you can generate all this code quickly with the short codes by just typing in st and either stateless or stateful whichever one you want for that okay so that's the general process for uh, creating widgets and that sort of stuff we'll look at some ways it's harder to move information back from this sometimes you have to create a listener uh, or if you're popping or creating a new kind of window you can return information sometimes from that and we'll look at one version of that when we do the weekly exercise the learning activity so okay